I bought a golf cart. Look at this little thing. Isn't it adorable? This is a Yamaha gas-powered golf cart, and we'll get into all the details of gas versus electric here in a minute, but I wanna show you guys this cute little golf cart. Now, I say cart, but really they're golf cars. When you live in a 55 plus neighborhood, this is an amazing way to get around your community. Maybe you're only gonna need one car and a golf cart, car, whatever you wanna call it, um, this one is street legal, has turn signals, has a little beep beep horn, and we are having so much fun with it out here in Pebble Creek. Now you guys know, if you've seen some of my other videos about my sister Heather and her husband Todd, who bought this beautiful garage with a home attached um, a few months ago out here in Pebble Creek. And so they drive the golf cart, but my advertising is all over it. We thought that might just be a fun and crazy thing to do. Okay, so let's talk about gas versus electric. Now I know a lot of you electric people are gonna send me comments and feel free, helps the YouTube algorithm comment away on what you like, gas or electric. We chose gas for several reasons. First of all, I don't know if you can see in this garage, but Todd, my brother-in-law, is a car guy, so he likes gas engines. Now this engine, I think, can go over 200 miles on a tank of gas, so it's not like we're gonna destroy the earth with our big, bad carbon footprint or anything. Um, electric people, they kind of argue that that's a big plus. But in this case, I did a lot of research, and one of the things that kind of concerned me here in Pebble Creek, we've had a few garage fires, and it's from people charging their golf carts. Now, you're going to say, Sean, how could that happen? How could an electric vehicle just catch fire? Well, I'll tell you how. First thing that people notice is their carbon monoxide detector goes off. There's no CO2 coming when you charge. However, there's hydrogen off-gassing. It's odorless, colorless, just like CO2, and the monitor will pick that up. So sometimes what will happen, let's say you have a gas water heater and you are charging, maybe you let it go a little too long, that gas can interact with your gas water heater. Next thing you know, boom, you've got a problem and all the neighbors are greatly entertained. So. That's something that people don't think about a lot. The other thing I didn't really care for is that you have to um, periodically put um, water in the little battery cells. That's just a lot of maintenance. I, I thought it'd be better to go old school. We get more power, higher speed, not that we're you know going 50 in Pebble Creek, but you can go a little faster. Um, if you're in a community or thinking of a community, let's say Victory at Verado, which is based on a hill, gas is going to give you the power to get up that hill. Okay, so back to the speed thing, going up the hill, if you pay a little bit extra, and I don't know, it's very minimal charge, um, we can go a little bit faster. I think the normal speed, top speed is like 25. Well, we can go 29 in this bad boy. So a little more power if you're in a hilly neighborhood. If it's going to be totally flat, then great. But I, I like the idea of having the power. I just think the gas is going to go a lot longer. Now I hear from people all the time, oh, we're, we're destroying the planet. We want green energy and we wanna you know, have a smaller carbon footprint. Don't be fooled. When you plug that plug in your garage to your car or your golf cart, you are still using natural resources. 42% of our power in Arizona comes, when I say power, meaning electricity, comes from natural gas. So don't think it's some magical thing that just happens. There are resources burned. So if you really want to get down to it, um, you could calculate all that. I know some of you guys are spreadsheeters and you might do that. If you like electric, by all means, feel free, but we just chose gas. So um, if, if you like one or the other, leave me a comment down below and we'll get a good discussion going. Okay, come along with us. We're gonna take it out for a little spin. We'll see if I can drive this thing. So the key to picking the right golf cart is to choose what's best for you. You want electric, get electric. You like gas, get gas. 
Just remember, if you want to play 18 holes of golf and then drive all the way home, the charge might be pretty low depending on what kind of neighborhood that you, cho that you choose. Now, uh, talking about these guys, Todd and Heather, they love this thing in Pebble Creek. They are driving all over the place. They play golf, they go to the pool, they go to bingo, they go to the clubhouse, you name it. They'll be driving this golf cart for years to come and really enjoying it while my face is on the back. So if you've been thinking about a golf cart or a home in a 55 plus neighborhood, be sure to just reach out to me by text, by phone, call the number that's on the screen. I'd love a chance to talk to you either on a phone call or by Zoom. I'll put the Zoom link in the comment section down below. So just let me know how my team and I can help. We are working in all of the 55 plus neighborhoods in Arizona and soon expanding to the rest of the Southwest US. We would love to add you to our YouTube client family.